What's up everybody, welcome back to The Pit. Today we're gonna to be talking about the upcoming AMD and NVIDIA keynotes from the virtual 2021 CES. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're expecting a lot of information to be coming out from all the major companies, NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel as well. We're expecting leaks about Ryzen, Threadripper, Radeon processors, lower end um, GPUs from NVIDIA, and some Rocket Lake news as well. So we're gonna talk about what we're expecting, what has been leaked, and what we think would be good for the industry. So we're gonna start off with AMD, Ryzen 5000, and what we hope is the Threadripper 5000 series as well. So. There's been a lot of leaks coming out about what to expect. I think we're gonna see some things we don't expect and we're gonna have some confirmation to some things that we're already pretty sure are coming. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the low end Ryzen 5000 SKUs. So you have the 3100, the 3300 series of CPUs that compete up against Intel's 10100s, 10300s. Um, I expect to kind of see those roll out here um, as we get into AMD's keynote. Uh, the lower end processors are going to be extremely, extremely beneficial to some people who aren't looking to spend three, 400 bucks on a processor. Um, for a budget build, you blow your budget out with all of those CPUs. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what kind of performance they tote um, and whether or not we'll actually be able to get any because it is extremely, extremely hard to still find any Ryzen processors at this point. Um, and the old ones, are, they somehow found their way to being $50 more expensive than they were when the 5000 series launched. Now, what I'm more interested to hearing from AMD is what their Threadripper line is going to bring. We've seen a lot of leaks coming out about a 16 core Threadripper, and I am extremely hopeful that that actually comes to fruition. Now, there's a lot of people that are concerned about a 16 core variant from the Threadripper series, and rightfully so. Everybody keeps wanting more and more cores, and depending on your application, that could be great. Um, and I definitely would benefit from 24 cores over 16 in the content creation market, but it is so darn expensive that I can't in any way justify doing it. Um, the cheapest Threadripper from last generation is still like $1,500, $1,600. And that just on top of that, you have a motherboard that's $500 at the cheap side or $400, give or take. And it's just a very expensive um, thing to get into. Now, a 16-core Threadripper, that they used to have one back a couple generations ago. Bringing that back could completely change the game for a lot of content creators and for AMD's stock themselves. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I would pick getting a 16-core Threadripper over the 5950X, and a couple just to throw out the top is going to be quad-channel RAM. DDR5 is coming. Um, with that, we're going to have you know quad-channel RAM support with DDR5 with content creation is going to be insane. Um, compared that to the 5950 with like dual channel um, DDR5, it's going to be a completely different ball game. You're also going to get access to a whole lot more PCIe lanes than you will on the desktop variant of the Ryzen CPUs. So if you need the PCIe lanes or quad channel RAM, we do a lot of memory intensive workloads on the channel. Um, it is definitely going to be worthwhile at that point. The question is, where do they slot it in? So you have the 5950 at 800 bucks. Um, I want to say the lowest Threadripper variant is somewhere around um, 1500. If that fell between 1000 and 1200 bucks, I think it would be perfect. It was definitely would definitely be a CPU that I'd be interested in getting my hands on. Um, it'd be interesting to see where it would land in gaming um, because 16 cores, at least with this guy, it doesn't really detrimentally do anything to the gaming workloads. If you take, you know, a 24 core Threadripper, sometimes you actually get better gaming performance by turning off some of those cores. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out, what the PCIe lanes do, um, because you don't really need PCIe lanes or quad channel RAM for gaming at all. So I, I really, really am hopeful for that CPU because that will be my introduction into the workstation, com workstation, workstation computers um, and for here on the channel. Going to be a lot of fun with that. Now, also expecting to hear a lot about the Radeon GPUs, the lower end SKUs. So this is a 5600 um, XT GPU. I actually thought it was one of the best budget oriented um, GPUs. So I believe when it launched, it was right around 300 bucks. Um, I thought it was a great card at the time. You had really good 1440p performance, a very top end of 1080p at the time. Um, and definitely this generation of graphics cards has moved the, the benchmark. But um, expecting a 6700 XT of some sort, 66 and maybe a 65, just kind of seeing how far down the line they go. But I would assume a 6700 XT would be a thing. 
um, probably right in the about the $400 price point. And then I would assume a 6500 XT would kind of take the place of the 5500s. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, where they go with that. But that's definitely something that AMD's got in their back pocket because now we're going to talk about what we expect from NVIDIA. So we've had leaks over the last several weeks from NVIDIA, not from NVIDIA, but companies around um, that have toted about a 3050, a 3050 Ti, and a 3060. Um, we had a video that we'll have in the link, uh, in a link for the video down in our description talking about um, the specs for all of those cards, but we expect from the NVIDIA camp during their keynote to kind of cement that and let us all know they're actually coming, what the price point is, and when to expect them. Now with that being said, that's going to be that direct competition to those low-end Radeon SKUs. The question that I have is, are any of them going to actually be obtainable? We've had this very weird, very odd stock um, through about the last six months, give or take. And with that, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's going to hinder everything even more. I can't imagine that people are going to think they can buy up $200 GPUs and sell them for $400 on eBay or $500, and they're going to just continuously um, get this scalping cycle that just doesn't seem to end, especially with where Bitcoin is. It's not helping our cause any. Um, I mean, I remember seeing pictures of like 30, 3080s um, in a mining rig and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. So hopefully um, the more SKUs coming out isn't going to hinder your ability to get one. I would assume you'll have an actual opportunity on Newegg or launch days to actually get these cards because they're not going to be as a, you know, wanted by the community as a 3080 or a 3090 or 3070. So um, I think you'll have a better opportunity to get the lower end models if that's what you're looking for. Um, other things we expect from NVIDIA 3080 Ti, maybe a 3070 Ti. The 3080 Ti is going to be a very hard card to find a place for in the market. Um, we've heard about it coming with 20 gigs of GDDR6X RAM, um, kind of taking back where you had that 16 gigs from all the AMD SKUs. The places, you only have about a 10% difference in gaming from the 3080 to 3090, and the price difference is massive. You're, you're 800 bucks, um, 700 on the low end, 8, 10 um, on the high end, to 1,500 bucks for all that extra RAM and not a whole lot of gaming performance. Where does the 3080 Ti fall in? Is it $1,000? Is that going to be the direct competitor to the 6900 XT? Because it can't beat the 3090 in gaming and have a justifiable price point cheaper than the 3090. AMD, or not AMD, but NVIDIA is not going to come out and blow their 3090 out of the water because they want people to buy the 3090. So it's going to be really hard for them to wiggle in the 3080 Ti and it be a justifiable skew compared to the 3080 or the 3090, so it'll be interesting. If you're losing four gigs of RAM and you have the same gaming performance as the 3090, but you get that for 1200 bucks instead of 1500, maybe that'll make sense to people. Um, it just kind of depends, because a 3090 isn't for gaming, it's for workstation, it's a, it's a Titan-like card. Um, but with that being said, I can't wait for either one of them. We're gonna be covering them same day. Um, now we're gonna talk about Intel and what we're expecting from them. So been seeing a lot of leaks coming out of the Rocket Lake set of CPUs, so we're expecting those to actually start launching in March. Um, my assumption here is that if Ryzen 5000 is still unobtainable by then, then Intel should actually expect to have a fairly good amount of CPUs sold if their stock isn't god-awful as well. Um, if you don't have an option, you walk into the Micro Center, you're on Newegg, you're building a computer now, 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 um, and there's a 11900K for 500 bucks, and there's not even a Ryzen CPU anywhere near that um, that you can actually get that's gonna kind of give you that high-end performance, you're probably gonna go with Intel at that point. Um, so the problem with Rocket Lake is you're still on 14 nanometer. So we know that nothing has drastically changed. We're on the LGA 1200 socket, so we're still where we were with the 10,000 series. Um, which is good, they don't need to change that socket, it provides plenty of power. We're still on 14 nanometers, so what that is my assumption is, they're just cranking up and kind of perfecting the 10th generation processors. Here's my, <laughs> my big uh, Intel fumble. They cut out two cores from the 11900K. So they're, the 10900K was at 10 cores, the 11900K is gonna be back at eight, then you'll have the 11700K, I believe, at eight too. Um, so, Really what's going to be interesting to me is kind of the low-end SKUs, the 11600K, where's that going to line up? 
um, and anything below that. The 11900K, we will definitely try and get one in studio so we can play with it, but I don't expect anything besides a very hot, very high power consumption computer or processor um, that can overclock like crazy. They were toting 5.3 gigahertz boost frequency. To be completely honest with you, that's not even impressive anymore. You can overclock almost any Intel chip that you get that's a, a K variant to 5 gigahertz with pretty much um, minor changes to the voltage and it's pretty stable. So um, it is time for Intel and I hope after Rocket Lake it happens, they need to get off of 14 nanometer. It is time to start actually stepping it up because you have no justifiable, if you have a 9900K, there is no reason, nothing that you can justify going to a 10th series or an 11th generation processor right now. Engineering samples have kind of made it to certain YouTubers right now, and it's it looks like 10th gen, which looks like 9th gen that for the most part looks like the 8th generation series of CPUs as well. So hopefully it's a step in the right direction in one way or another, and then after Rocket Lake, we get some real CPUs coming from Intel. I love Intel CPUs. I love playing with them, overclocking them. They're a lot of fun. On the test bench we have over here, we have a 10600K that we're doing some overclocking with just for the fun of it. Um, I hope that they actually get it back together so we can have a lot of competition between AMD and Intel again. But um, who knows when that's actually gonna happen. With that being said, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, like the video and comment, and let me know what you guys are hoping to see from the keynotes at CES, and we will see you in the pit in the next one.